Hi everyone, this is Brett Endes, the dog savant, dogtrainingla.com. So I'm here with Bowie, and we're gonna talk about how to hike with your dog. Um, first of all, we wanna make sure that your dog is nice and calm before you get out of the car once you arrive. Too many dogs come in hot, and I talk about this at the dog park, or any new place, you open the door and they're off to the races, and the whole rest of the time you're there, you're trying to get control of them, where if you had established control and maintained it before you even arrived, in some cases you take them on a long walk, you get them focused, get them in the car, maintain commands, and keep them in that state until you arrive. And control, it means mental control, keeping them focused in his command, not sit, you know, physically domineering them or manipulating retreats or avoiding the issue altogether. So you want to get this state so he's not thinking about the trail before you even show up for it. So once you do that, we want to do a series of commands to unload him from the vehicle. So Bowie's in a sit, he's maintaining his position, he's focused, or if you want to call it a stay, I don't believe in a stay. I think that a command can mean itself because dogs do not use language. They have compartmentalized type of thinking like we're doing here with Mr. B. So I'm gonna tell him off and with that, sit. And then we establish commands. I'm using a pull tab because I like to have a little control. I practice enough with Bowie off lead where I feel confident that I can have him listen and not take off or get too distracted once I have him off the leash. But for someone who might not have practiced, you might wanna start with a short leash, a long leash, or even this pull tab where if he gets out of my range, I can pick it up and I maintain my control. Okay, so let me close the vehicle and we're gonna get going here. Okay, so I'm walking on the trail here. I let my dog run free. I've learned that dogs can stay with you by instinct, but even if they have a hard time with that, you can, let's go, boo. And I just use a let's go and that just gets him back at pace. So if he gets too astray, he knows to come back with me. So another thing you wanna work on is some off-leash obedience in the trail. Like I've said in other videos, dogs are very specific in how they apply what you've taught them. They're black and white thinkers. So if you don't teach them how to listen in specific environments, especially one like this, where you have all this stuff going on, they're gonna have a very difficult time listening if they see a deer or some kind of animal to take off, or they see a person just simply because you haven't practiced. So if your dog is not naturally inclined to be focused or listen in the woods, take that time, use the leash. You'll get there, but you want to make sure that they have that foundation before you push the issue. Okay, so here we are walking with Bowie. And like I always say to my clients, you want your dog to establish a good basic obedience foundation in these new type of situations where you're going to encounter a whole unique set of distractions, scents, sounds, and new situations that you will not encounter in your normal suburban or urban training environment. So what I like to do, and I'll demonstrate here with Bowie, is I'm gonna do some basic off-leash obedience. So I'm gonna call him to me, come. Good, I'm gonna have him sit. I'm gonna add this log as a little obstacle, and that's a very good point for me to bring up. You want your dog to be well-versed in listening on the trail with a wide range of circumstances. You want to do angle changes. You want to hide from them. You want to add distractions and increase the intensity of them, including the distance as you practice and your dog improves in their skills. Why? Quite frankly, in a real life situation, your dog is not going to be maintaining visual contact with you when you need them to listen. So what I'm gonna do is create a good enough distance. This is new for Boo, so. You really have to come out here and practice more. But what I'm gonna do is call him when I feel I get to this new distance and I want him to feel he gets a reward for doing this. I'm gonna use a stick. It's good enough for him, good enough for me. So I'm gonna call him, come. Go, yay, go, yay. And he's gonna automatically, good, and then, okay, good. And that's all you need, folks. Very good. Another thing I really like to teach dogs is how to listen when they get up ahead of me or they're distracted when out in the woods or out hiking, uh, because that's really when you're gonna, again, need to have them listen. So you give them this impulse control, you also teach them how on the fly to respond to, let's say, a come command right when the chips are down, right when you're really gonna need this in a practical situation. So like I had said, you wanna get your dog used to listening when they're not so focused to begin with. You want them to apply the ability to respond to your recall or your come command when they're distracted. So you see, here comes a hiker and I'm gonna call Bowie, come! And he learns right there, good, right on the moment's notice. Had to click back into it, let's go, let's go. Huh. Sit. Good, very good, good. Hey, how you doing? Okay, and then once it's passed, you can release them and let them go back as long as you have control and they're not 
you know, so we can practice here again. Gets ahead, goes after the hiker. Come! And then back we go. Good, very good. Sit. Good, very good. Okay, so there you have it. Some basics on how to teach your dog to listen when out hiking on the trail. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Please subscribe and love your dog. Bye, guys.